Hey guys, how are you doing today? Well, I hope I'll be your host, Jared Bronstein, and welcome to another video here on Life's Biggest Questions, the only channel on YouTube that looks to answer all those burning and curious questions you may have. Today, we'll be looking at the interesting creature of the terrible dogfish and discussing how it would affect us if it were real. Before we dive in, make sure to subscribe, click that bell notification, and of course, give this video a thumbs up if you'd want a terrible dogfish as a pet. So the terrible dogfish, is it a dog? Is it a fish? Is it just plain old terrible? Well, it's none of those things because it's not real. But in the story of Pinocchio, it is just that. A horrifying mass of fish or shark mixed with the characteristics of a dog, but way worse, which makes it terrible as well. Believed to be more than a kilometer long, larger than a five-story building, and with three rows of razor-sharp teeth, this is not a creature we would want roaming our waters. But what if it did? Well, let's find out. In the story of Pinocchio, both Pinocchio himself and his father get eaten by the terrible dogfish. They manage to survive though, and it's revealed that Pinocchio's father was able to live off the ship supplies the terrible dogfish was eating over the span of two years. So that leads me to believe maybe this thing isn't necessarily as violent as we believe. Although it seems to eat anyone and anything, it doesn't seem to chew them with its razor sharp teeth. This could be because it's so large, it could swallow things whole, which means there could be an entire ecosystem and world living inside the terrible dogfish. Interestingly enough, it's considered a sea monster, meaning it wouldn't reside in the Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, or Arctic oceans. Instead, it would terrorize any of the larger seas, such as the Mediterranean, Caribbean, South China, Hudson Bay, Sea of Japan, Gulf of Mexico, and so on. This would, of course, be a problem for those living in the surrounding areas, mostly on the coast. And this is assuming there was only one terrible dogfish in the world. If there were families of them and all the seas were infested with all these families, no, really no one would be safe. So let's explore both possibilities. If there was only one terrible dogfish in the entire world, it would affect fishermen and the price of fish in general. Using the example of the Mediterranean Sea, most fishermen would fear for their lives, which would deter them from even going out to sea. Those brave enough would get top dollar for the fish they bring back to shore. In turn, this means the coast of fish in Italy, Greece, Bulgaria, Croatia, Turkey, even Libya, Egypt, Israel, and Lebanon would certainly increase in price. The same would go for any other sea that terrible dogfish were to inhabit. Cruises would most likely be barred from taking to the waters, and shipping routes would most certainly be affected as well. Again, this would be the case for any sea affected by the terrible dogfish. Assuming it eats anything and everything, there would be a significant decrease in fish in general, and any creature living in the water. Again, making their value go up tenfold, maybe even more. And if there were multiple terrible dogfish terrorizing all the seas worldwide, well, the effects would be much more terrible. No pun intended. Although tons of our shipping routes use our oceans, technically the seas are part of those oceans. And with multiple terrible dogfish in these smaller seas, they'd eventually need to migrate to a habitat with more space. Who's to say they wouldn't rule our four oceans? If this was the case, all shipping routes over the water would inevitably be forbidden. Our waters wouldn't be considered safe by any means. We'd either have to find a way to live without using the waters, or find a way to combat the terrible dogfish. But we're not talking about jaws here, we're talking about a 3,280 foot long fish, not including its tail, that's five stories tall. I don't even know if an army would do the trick to bring this thing down. And if we had more than one in the world, well they'd probably be the only living thing left in the ocean. Now with that being said, technically speaking, the terrible dogfish is literally just a giant dogfish, which is a species of mini sharks that live all around the world. The most commonly known is the spiny dogfish, although there are approximately 119 species of dogfish living in the oceans. Now, the dogfish usually travels in packs of hundreds and sometimes thousands. They eat fish, squid, crustaceans, and sometimes octopus and other sharks. However, dogfish are smaller sharks, usually a few feet in length. That's most likely why they go after smaller fish their size. If they were over 3,200 in length, I'm sure they too would eat anything and everything. So with this in mind, it seems the dogfish would not only eat everything in the ocean, but it would in a sense most likely create its own ecosystem within its body. Although this would affect the sea and ocean's entire ecosystem due to a lack of certain fish and overpopulation of other fish and bacterias, in a sense, a new world would be created in the terrible dogfish's stomach. But as previously mentioned, although it has razor sharp teeth, its size would allow it to literally swallow anything and everything whole, maybe with the exception of much larger cruise ships. But if we're talking fish or even humans, they would be swallowed whole and left to live in the dogfish's stomach. Of course, there's something about the terrible dogfish that makes him different from any other fish. It has asthma. I mean, that's how Pinocchio escapes, and considering how we're making a video on what would happen if this thing were real, we need to base what would happen on both the version of dogfish that actually exists and the version that was written in the story of Pinocchio. If the terrible dogfish did have asthma and had to sleep with its mouth open, emerged from the water, this would allow most fish and humans to actually escape. Now, most fish probably wouldn't know much of a difference being in the stomach of a terrible dogfish or in the ocean. Sure, the ocean is much bigger, but I don't think a fish would know the difference between a multi-million square mile ocean and the body of a terrible dogfish. They'd both be large bodies of water in a sense. Humans, on the other hand, would get out of there as soon as they could, which makes me question how dangerous these things really would be to the human race. Sure, it'd be scary to be eaten, or I guess swallowed whole by one of these things, but would it kill you? Probably not. Plus, when it sleeps, you'd be able to get out. Of course, if this terrible creature lives under the water, wouldn't that mean its entire body is full of water? How does that explain Pinocchio and his father not drowning? Because it's a made-up story. That's how. Assuming these 
things had a body full of water, humans would inevitably drown if they were to be swallowed by the terrible dogfish. So, correction, I guess you would die. So all in all, what would happen if the terrible dogfish was real? Well, it would affect our waters, that's for sure. Although while it slept with its mouth open, fish would be able to escape every night, so maybe it wouldn't be as catastrophic as we think, for the fish at least. Any human eaten by one of these monsters would drown and be feasted upon by the fish the terrible dogfish consumed. The army may even have to get involved to take this thing down, and assuming a bazooka or some guns don't do the trick, we need to use chemical warfare. But that would mean polluting our entire ocean, or possibly sea, depending on where it is. Or, if there were multiple terrible dogfish, it would all really depend on where they lived and what we're attacking. It just wouldn't be pretty. We'd not only make one of our oceans completely toxic and full of radiation, but it would inevitably affect all the fish in the waters and surrounding countries would lose their water supply. And the terrible dogfish might even become bigger because of radiation, be a mutant, who knows? But thankfully the terrible dogfish doesn't exist. Isn't that just dandy? I mean, there are dogfish, but as previously mentioned, they're usually two to four feet, not that big. They got poisonous fins and sharp teeth, but usually don't even attack humans. They're not nearly as dangerous as the terrible dogfish would be. So now I'll ask the same question from when we started this video. Would you still want the terrible dogfish as a pet? If he was on your side, I guess it'd be a win for you. I don't know, how would you even keep it as a pet? You'd have to own maybe a part of the ocean somehow. Either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed this one, share it with a Pinocchio fan, give it a thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe to our channel. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video. What if the Titanoboa snake took over the world? Storm of Storm said, I just wanted to know how a snake would run a government. I don't know, like any politician does, because they're all snakes. Evan Dexter said, humans are far smarter than the Titanoboas. We could hunt them to extinction with ease. I disagree with that, because they're a lot bigger and stronger than us. Andres Murrow said, the problem with this line of thinking is that you are assuming that a near infinite amount of Titanoboa would just appear one day, which is just laughable, nonsensical, and outright silly. For Titanoboa to take over the world, they must first survive numerous ice ages and extinction events. So what we would be dealing with are their giant descendants and not Titanoboas, like lava snakes with some plant-like characteristics. In that regard, we would just develop alongside these creatures. Our technology would change, but we would end up subjugating and domesticating them. So no, it would not be an apocalypse, as humans are harder to kill than cockroaches and are supreme when it comes to ingenuity and adapting. I mean, I'm not really going to argue with you other than saying you're wrong, because this is a video about an extinct animal. If they take over the world, they just take over the world, you just got to go with it. So yeah, they all appeared one day out of nowhere. We'd be f And on that note, guys, I'm gonna wrap this one up. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with a friend, subscribe, click that bell, drop us some comments below with other questions you may have for our channel, and we'll see you guys soon.